In this video, I'm going to show you guys how I color grade my iPhone 15 Pro Max ProRes log footage to make it look super filmic and cinematic. Step number one is always going to be to launch up DaVinci Resolve. Now, this is a clip I shot with the iPhone 15 Pro Max in 4K ProRes log. Within Resolve, go over to your color tab. Now, this is where we're going to transform from log to Rec. 709 and I've done a full tutorial on this. Click somewhere up here to see how that's done. Now, if you don't want to do this step every single time, you can add in a power grade, which is this right here, which creates these three nodes for you automatically. Uh, so you don't have to do this every single time. I'm going to link the one I made for you guys down in the description below. So you can download it for free where you guys can drag and drop this on and get these three nodes immediately. First off, on the base node, I want to correct this image. I can already see it's really blue, especially if you look over here in the scopes. So what I'm going to do is go up to my temperature and increase it to about 250. Next, I'm going to go to the HDR panel and increase my exposure a little bit to get this nice and balanced here in my scopes. Now create a new node and I'm going to call this Highlights. In this node, I want to recover all the details that we may lose in our highlights because this is a bright sunny day. Thank God we shot up log. I'm able to retain all the details in the highlight without it going pure white. Head over to the selection tool and here I'm going to select on Luma. Luma basically ignores color, contrast, saturation completely. It's only light. So I'm going to select the sky and in my low value, go to 60 and then low soft, I'm going to put at around 15. If I press shift H, I can see exactly which part is being selected. This is a rough guideline, which works for me, uh, but you can move the space around a little bit to get even more precise control over the specific highlight spots and also blur the radius up a little bit. Now with that selected, I'm going to go to my primaries and drop my highlights and just take a look at that. It's bringing back the detail in the highlights, but only focusing specifically on the selection we made with our selection tool. Next, I'm going to create a new node after the CSD node and call this contrast. Here, go to curves, tap on the three dots and make sure you have editable spline selected. Now with the top point selected, you'll see a second point appear because of the editable spline. And when you drag that up, you can see the curve is a really nice and smooth curve rather than a harsh dotted curve. This will give us the cinematic S curve as it's called. So create one for the highlights and drag that to the left and then create a point on the shadows and drag that down and to the right. And you can see we're adding in a bit of contrast to the image. Next, create a new node after your contrast node and we call this hue, create a new parallel node and call this grade. Now with the hue and grade node is where we're gonna really customize the color of the entire image. First up, select the hue, go into your curves, select hue versus hue, select the sky. And here I'm gonna drag these points out to the left and right, which gives me a little bit of a softer control over the blue hues in the image. So I'm gonna bring up the middle point Point here up towards teal and you can already see we're getting that teal-ish look. Now with that selected as well, I'm going to go to hue versus saturation, tap on the same point again, spread it out once again like I did before and bring up the middle point to make the blue pop a little bit more and saturate that a little bit more. Next, I'm going to do the same thing for the oranges, create points in the orange point and bring up the saturation there. Now turning it off and on, you can already see we're getting that teal and orange look. Next up, select your grade node and go to your primaries. So go over to your gamma and introduce a little bit of warmth there. Not too much, we're gonna do this just a little bit and you can already see the brick is popping out a little bit more. Same thing, we're gonna go to the lift and go to the opposite direction and add in a little bit of greenish teal, which gives this nice color contrast, it looks beautiful. Now turning the hue and gray note off and on, you can see how the color levels really changed, giving us a more stylized look. Next, create a new node after this and we're gonna call that halation and create a new parallel node and call that glow. With halation selected, go over to effects and search for halation. Drag and drop that on. And here you can see the effect already kicking in. This adds that filmic defect of lights bouncing off and blooming a little bit in the highlight spots or where sources of light are very strong. Now by default, it is very strong. So we're gonna customize this a little bit. In your settings, what you can do with halation selected, select on view isolated regions and make sure it is only applying to the brightest spots in the image by moving the threshold slider left and right. I like to go just where it begins to touch the sky because if you do it too much, you're gonna get some banding in the sky and nobody wants that. Next, we're gonna go into our dye layer reflection and drop the strength a little bit so that we can make it as subtle as possible. So I'm gonna keep the strength a little bit low and make my spread a little bit high because that's how I like it to bloom into the image. For me, this combo works the best. And then what you can do is go into your secondary glow, increase the strength a little bit, make the spread go out to max. This is just my technique. Go to max and then increase and decrease the strength a little bit based on your footage. Next, I'm gonna choose the color to be a little bit reddish because the brick is red and I feel like the glow would be red off of that. It looks great, but it's a bit too much. So to fix that, we're gonna go down into the global blend and I'm gonna reduce the blend to about 70%. And now if I turn it off and on, I think it looks very realistic and very nice. Next, I'm gonna select the glow layer and search for the glow effect. 
So with the glow layer selected, we're gonna go up and choose our shine threshold to just where it overlaps with the sky. For the spread, I'm gonna adjust it until I get it just above the bricks and a little bit overlapping once again. Scroll down to our composite type and I'm gonna change it to screen so it's not too harsh. Next, I'm gonna go to the global blend and I'm gonna drop it down to about 55%. I think that's where it looked good. And I'm gonna go into my color filter and again, make it that reddish color, tap okay. And now if I turn it off and on, you see it's a very subtle difference, but it sort of affects the entire image. Now, after the halation and glow is done, I'm gonna go back to my contrast node and adjust this again, just to make the halation and glow dehazed effect tie in a little bit with the rest of the image. Next, create a new node after the halation glow, call this contrast two. This is the second layer of contrast I'm gonna to add to tie in the highlight spots for the halation with the shadows. So here I'm gonna go into my primaries actually and increase the contrast by 0.60. Next, I'm gonna go into my curves again and turn off the editable splines this time, create a dot on the highlights, a dot on the shadows, and then in my mid-tones, I'm gonna move them down slightly and highlights up slightly. This really will tie it in and check out the before and after. It makes the sky pop a little bit more. It makes my glows more organic and match in with the rest of the image. Now for the final node, I'm gonna go into my LUT, drag and drop in my favorite LUT, which is the Joker LUT by Film Riot. I'm gonna drop down the keying opacity to about 40% and check out the before and after. This really cleans up the final look. Now I'm gonna copy these settings and paste them on my other clips and you can already see how it ties in together and creates a really contrasty, really cinematic look that I'm super, super happy with. That's how I color grade my iPhone 15 Pro Max ProRes log video. Most of the time, this time going for the cinematic film teal and orange look. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you like it. Consider subscribing for more color grading related videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again in the next video. Until then, take care.